The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the entire world in many ways. Not only did it bring sadness and grief, but it also brought the world economy down. Experts officially declared the Philippines is in economic recession, the first recession in 29 years. Last December, vaccines started rolling out, initially in the UK. In the Philippines, we received the first batch of vaccines last week, and we expect more to come. As for the economy, a lot of business is closed, and it is not getting better. The government is pressured to keep certain parts of the country, most especially Metro Manila, under GCQ. Despite the number of cases, we are still in ECQ, mainly because of the economy. Our proposed economy recovery package are as follows. With a budget of 82 billion pesos for vaccines, government should prioritize vaccination of the entire population. In doing so, consumer confidence will increase and make more purchases, which will definitely help boost the economy. Decrease of VAT for services and products. By decreasing VAT, it can provide a short-term boost to the economy and people can have more money. By having more money, it incentivizes consumers to bring forward and take advantage of the lower prices. This temporary VAT cut can be an effective stimulus. Offer tax breaks or incentives to businesses severely affected by the pandemic. For business owners, having a tax break would also help them with their businesses. Money that is saved can be used to purchase to influx back into the business. Encourage loans by offering lower interest rates with longer payment terms. Since a lot of businesses are going bankrupt, the government may allow banks to lend to business owners at a lower rate. With lending at low interest rates, business owners will be encouraged to apply for a loan to keep their businesses afloat. One good example is the Bayanihan Act, which is the government's policy on adjusted loan repayments and the COVID-19 assistance to restart enterprises or the CARES program, which provides collateral and interest-free loans to MSMEs, which they can avail by just paying a 4 to 8% processing fee. Ease travel restrictions, especially for goods, and promote better contact tracing. The problem right now in travel in any means in the Philippines is exceedingly difficult. This is because of the erratic and lack of transparency. The government has been informing the public of the rules and regulations and requirements they need to comply with. Embrace change, especially in the workplace. The pandemic has changed a lot of things and things will never be the same again. Work, for instance, is not done at the office anymore, but at home. Employees and employers have both experienced working online. Employees have started requesting work from home at least once a week, even after face-to-face -face has resumed. Due to the major shift in purchasing habits towards online, mostly Chinese companies on online platforms, both Philippine government and businesses lose a lot of opportunity in tax and revenue. Incentivize SMEs based on number of employed personnel. We think this would be a good program to do since all businesses, in order to survive, would need people to spend their money on. The only way to sustain this is to have less unemployment in the country, which we are experiencing worse numbers more and more. Invest in digital platforms to help SMEs shift to e-commerce. Businesses may also pivot to e-commerce so that they will not be severely affected by the pandemic. By shifting to e-commerce, they may be able to stay afloat and ride out the current recession, and they may be able to bounce back once the pandemic is over.